So Photoshop is really great at creating textures and can save you a lot of work, um, particularly if you're uh, creating things for UV maps, for 3D models or textures for games. So a good sort of example to show how quick and easy it can be is creating a stone texture. So we're going to create new, um, a square here, thousand by thousand, fine. Uh, to be honest, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what size really, but let's go create. And here's your square. Now on the left here, you've got your color range for this. So we've got like a darker stony color and we've got a lighter stony color, but you can choose what you want for this. It's, you know, there's no right and there's no wrong. So we'll go for that. And kind of what we want to do is just paint in some color variation. And a very quick way to do that is filter, render and clouds. And you can see you've now got nice darks and nice lights, sort of a randomish mix. So that's that. And now we need to teach Photoshop to know what's high and what's low, sort of give a bit of depth to it and, and a sort of a, a real proper texture to it. So we go to our channels. If you can't see channels, just go to window and make sure channels is ticked and you'll then see it. And we're going to do a new channel here and we're going to rename this stone texture. Now with this one, we can do the same thing again. We can just render some clouds on it. And that sort of teaches uh, the, the lows and the highs on this image. And then it's a simple question of going back to our layers here. And if you want to give a slight sort of more sandstone texture, you can add some a very fine grain of noise. If you go to filter, noise, add noise, you can add noise onto this. Just do very little because otherwise it looks uh, it, it never looks that good. So be careful with that. But it's all about experimentation. And this is why I always have my history panel up here because I can then step back and see how things work. So let's add the depth information onto this. So we go filter and then we go to render and lighting effects. Now it's already selected the stone texture here. You can see here's your channels. If you get you've got your red green. You can see all different effects on this. And that's your real proper stone texture. So almost automatically you've got different kind of levels of stone that you can use. Now you've got all your controls up here. As you can see that gives a, a more sort of uh, a more sort of sharp edges to them. Um, it's just your personal preference how it, how it works. Um, but you've got a, a large amount of control on this. And you can see here's a really deep stone texture. You've got different lights as well. Uh, let's try this one. This one's a little bit better, I think. There, you can see much more the effect of the light on the actual image. And you can move around. You've got a definite shine there now. So that's quite interesting. So what else can you do? Let's cancel that. Let's go back to our channels and let's create another channel. And we'll call this stone. I'm not quite sure how to describe this. It's like when you get stones, a stone rock face that's been sort of chiseled out and you have the sort of uh, downward sort of scrapes. You, you'll see when you, so let's put, I tell you what, let's put this as uh, rock face excavation. Hopefully this will make sense when you see it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go filter, render and clouds again. And then we're going to go filter, stylize, wind. And we're going to add, let's have a look. If we move across the image, right. Can you see now you're getting sort of lines in this and we're doing 200% wind. We're not doing too much. Then we're going to go okay. And you can see now these little scrapes. So with this rocks, this uh, using the wind for the sort of rock excavation or, or crystal texture almost, um, at the moment it's going sideways, but there's nothing to stop you rotating um, that round. So we're going to rotate that clockwise so that they're now vertical, which would be more true to life in, in uh, real life. And we're going to go back to our layers, select our image, and then we're going to go through the same thing, render, lighting effects, and there you go. You can see now the, the sort of crystal facet textures, if you like, which I always think are quite interesting. 
And again, it's up to you to adjust your lighting so that it's the most convincing. But as you can see, the control you have is, is phenomenal. Um, if we go OK, and you've got a really interesting texture. Um, and it can be as high resolution as you like. Um, a Photoshop is accelerated on your graphics card. It runs really quick. So you can feasibly do big sort of 4K or 8K textures without too much trouble, as long as you've got a decent um, PC. So I hope that gives you some idea. Um, and once you get started, um, let your curiosity get the better of you. Keep your history up. Um, and that way you can then always uh, add a new channel here and you can do weird stuff to it. So you could generate some... Let's generate some noise. And then we could then filter, stylize, uh, not stylize, let's have a look. What are we looking for? Mosaic, here we go, this could be interesting. And then go back here, background layer, filter, render, lighting effects, and we're going to select this alpha and here you go and you've got another interesting image and there's your height so I hope this is some use and I hope it's got your creative uh, juices flowing so to speak um, and and have fun enjoy <laughs>